Hi, I'm Player One. And I'm Player Two. Today we're going to do a two-player review on Nino Kune, Wrath of the White Witch. Nino Kune is a JRPG that was created with Level 5 in collaboration with Studio Ghibli. Some of you may know Level 5 as the creators of The White Knight Chronicles, The Dark Cloud series, Professor Layton, as well as Dragon Quest 8 and 9. That's right. And uh, for those of you who don't know Studio Ghibli, they're pretty famous for making the movies such as uh, Princess Mononoke, uh, Howl's Moving Castle, and the Academy Award winning Spirited Away. All right, let's take a look. So the story behind Nino Kune follows Oliver. He's a, a young boy who is from Motorville, USA. Motorville is basically a fill-in for any town in the United States, a small town. And uh, after this tragic uh, event, he finds himself transported to a magical land where he's sent on a quest motivated by the chance to save a loved one. And uh, upon arriving in this land, you quickly discover that not all is well, and the inhabitants are having pieces of their hearts stolen away by an evil wizard known only as the Dark Jim. Uh, luckily, Oliver is the only one capable of restoring the broken heart pieces, and uh, this actually coincides with his personal quest of saving his loved one, so it works out pretty well. How inconvenient would it be if Oliver couldn't repair the broken heart, so he was just like, ah, oh, that sucks. That would suck. We would be playing Final Fantasy. I guess we would be. <laughs> uh, throughout the game, Oliver will encounter various different friends and companions, including Drippy, uh, a fairy with a, a lovely Cockney accent, who accompanies him from the very beginning of the game. He acts as Oliver's guide and showing him the ropes and, and how to deal with his new surroundings. Unfortunately, you do have to go through Drippy before you can do anything. So even if you manage to figure out the next step on your own, Drippy requires you to read through four or five lines of text from him, where he essentially talks to you as if you uh, are a three-year-old. Turns out you can turn that off from the options menu. Seriously? Mm, nobody knows. I did not know. Nobody knows. The combat in Nino Kune is a twisted form of Pokemon's turn-based combat. It's what the Pokemon fans have been looking for in a console game. You choose between using your pets to fight for you and casting spells yourself. Both you and your pets level up, and uh, you share health with whichever pet you have active at the time. Uh, this forces you to think a little strategically in battle when swapping between the rock, paper, scissors mechanics of the monster deck. I didn't like that you had to scroll through the attack options. Uh, I feel with a, a dozen buttons on my controller, I should be able to set different attack commands to different ones. Uh, I didn't like that the situations where you quickly had to defend, instead of being able to, to just make a selection on my control pad, I had to actually go and scroll through a menu, uh, oftentimes full of spells I don't use, uh, in order to do that. As well, I found that the AI counterparts were sloppy at best. They, they, it didn't matter what you set them to, whether you set them to keep us healthy, attack, or do whatever you want to do, uh, they just did what they wanted to do. It was ridiculous. I found it to be atrocious. And that really was the, the biggest complaint I had with the game, was how even if I told uh, one of them to focus just on healing, she'd blow all her mana in the first three minutes of a fight attacking, and then when we needed to be healed, she would just, you know, twinkle her harp and hope for the best. I, I do agree. A lot of the options should have had their own button, especially defend. Um, and, and I also noticed that for the first half of the game, especially when controlling the AI characters, uh, it was almost impossible to control them in battle. And, and it wasn't until about halfway through that the, you gained the ability to control the AI tunes to defend or attack with one single button. And even then it was slow to respond when you needed it to be most accurate. Another minor detail that I had a problem with uh, is that I felt the side quests were very repetitive. I did them all as they came uh, and I wouldn't even advance a story mission until I had completed all available side quests. And by the end of it I wasn't even reading the text anymore. I was just looking for the blue and green dots on the mini-map uh, so that I could get through them as fast as I could. Now maybe it's my fault for going and doing them in order like that, and maybe if I had spread it out more I might not have noticed the repetitiveness as much. But there's only so many times you know, you can fix someone's courage before you start to realize that, okay, I'm just doing the same thing over and over again. No, I do agree. It, it, it can be a little repetitive doing those quests. But I also found that because of them, my grinding didn't really feel like grinding. And the rewards that you get from doing the quests really make it worthwhile, which is why I kept plowing through the quests throughout the game. Uh, traveling from town to town doesn't really change uh, in comparison to other RPGs. You start off walking from town to town like in most RPGs, um, but as you carry on you unlock faster modes of transportation. However, the scenery is so gorgeous that the travel doesn't feel like much of a chore as it can in other RPGs. From the very beginning you will notice the beautiful artwork in this game, which appears to be all hand-drawn. The characters, places, and monsters all have a very rich look to them, and it makes you feel as if you're actually part of a Studio Ghibli movie. 
Although the art direction will come across as childish to some, you shouldn't let this turn you away as Nino Kune still has all the trappings of an amazing RPG. To achieve your goal, you end up traveling all over the world visiting the different kingdoms. Uh, all the locations have a very distinct but generic vibe to them. From snow-covered to flame-kissed, we cover all four seasons in the land of Nino Kuni. But the artwork doesn't disappoint and will keep you engrossed to the very end. Right from the start, you'll notice the amazing soundtrack within the game. In fact, it was the Tokyo Philharmonic Orchestra who performed the entire in-game music, and everything from walking around town to fighting a boss battle has its own unique feel and style that never seems to get old or repetitive. The sound effects are crisp and clear, and every spell cast, attack landed, and item picked up has a rewarding feel. Overall, Nino Kuni is a refreshing experience that the PS3 desperately needed. Um, a lack of really good JRPGs in the Western market brought Nino to an already starved audience who were just waiting for something to sink their teeth into. And when they finally got their hands on Nino, they were not disappointed. It avoids the linear feel of some more recent games, and at the same time, it doesn't lose focus or find yourself losing interest with the side quests. I think it's safe to say that we definitely recommend this game to any fans of the genre, and anybody looking to start on JRPGs, this is a good place to go. Definitely. Alright, just want to say thanks again guys for watching. This has been a Cartridge Bros. 2 player review. Um, if you like what you've seen, uh, feel free to leave a comment and subscribe. And uh, if there's anything you'd like to see covered in the future, feel free to mention it below as well. This is Player 1 and Player 2 signing off. Thanks for watching. Okay. Overall, Nino Kuni is a Overall, Nino Kuni is a refreshing experience that... <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Panicking. Hmm.